Hi, my name is Alex, and in this episode of Magic Missile Minis, I'm going to be showing you guys how to sculpt a skeleton miniature for Dungeons & Dragons. Alrighty, so first things first, you're going to want to make your armature, and you're actually going to make the armature the same way you normally would for any other miniature. Cutting out your piece of wire, folding it in half, and then going ahead to twist out a torso and start making some legs. If you're interested in for a little bit more depth in how I do these, you can check out the video in the card, which is my overview of how to sculpt miniatures. So, once I have given him his arms, I can pose him up and I can put him on one of my little bottles that I have that I use as sculpting handles. Before I add any green stuff, I make sure that I file down the armature to make sure that the green stuff will actually stick onto it. And then I add on a layer of green stuff, making sure to keep it as thin as possible since we are going to be sculpting a skeleton after all, which don't tend to be particularly bulky. Since I want this guy to be holding a spear, I add a little bit more green stuff and add a wire onto his left hand. So with the armature finished, we can finally start actually doing some sculpting. And the first tip that I will give for anybody wanting to sculpt a skeleton or anything really is to look up reference. This will help instrumentally in making sure that you know what bones need to be where. With my reference up, I can start sculpting the basic shape for the chest as well as the pelvis. And one thing I would suggest if you're sculpting a skeleton is don't get too caught up in adding every single little detail. Like here you can see me sculpting in the pelvis. I'm doing a fairly rough shape and that's honestly going to serve for what it needs to be. So don't get too caught up in adding every last detail, especially for a miniature like this, where you're probably gonna wanna have a handful of these skeletons that you're going to be using in an encounter or something along those lines. So once you have the basic shape for the chest and pelvis, you can start adding a little bit more green stuff onto the limbs. And what I'm focusing on as I'm sculpting the femur bone is making it kind of concave with the center being fairly thin in comparison to the ends which actually kind of have this rounded off shape that connect to the pelvis as well as the lower leg. And once you're sculpting the bones that are in the shin, I don't actually know what those are called, um, you mainly want to try to get that detail of the fact that there are two bones there. Once I've got the legs finished, I then go back to the chest that we had made and start adding the ribs. And these are actually not that difficult to do. They're simply indentations into the chest that we had just made. One thing that you might have to play around with is making sure that you don't move the entire chest around too much as you're adding these indentations because it can be pushed around as you're adding all of the ribs. It's also important to keep in mind that you're going to want to add a uh, detail for the sternum and the ribs as well. But I shouldn't have to tell you that because you should be using reference and so you should see it. Have I told you guys to use reference enough yet? Once I finish the torso, I add the, some more green stuff onto the arms, mimicking the same process that I did for the legs. After that, we can move on to work on the skull. And a cool little trick that you can do to create a good sculpting handle for small details like this is you can actually take the blade out of your craft knife and then stick some wires in there and then start sculpting on that rather than trying to do it on a separate piece of wire or whatever and I found that to be really really helpful for this kind of stuff. But as you're sculpting this guy your main focus is going to be sculpting in the eye sockets as well as the temples but the rest of the details we're going to go back in and add after it's set. I then want to start working on the spear so I quickly chop off the extra wire that I've added and cover that with a thin layer of green stuff as well adding a little bit of texture to that, some lines in it to make it look more like wood. I then go back to the skeleton and add the spine, which I'm adding now that everything on the miniature has set. And so I add a long piece of green stuff running along the spine and start sculpting in all of the different and start adding all of the little details for that. Keeping in mind that I want to have the sections uh, corresponding to the ribs that I've made before and add little bits jutting out from the parts where there aren't any ribs down towards his lower back. I then also want to make this guy a shield so I sculpt that onto a separate um, miniature base and add all of the details like the wooden texture of the planks and stuff like that. And while I'm doing that I also make the spearhead that I'm going to add to the spear later on. Now that the green set has set on the skull, I go back there and start adding the final details. 
primarily adding the nose for the skull as well as the upper and lower jaw. And one thing to note that I actually decided not to do is I don't actually give him any teeth. That's something that I feel like you could add, but is a fairly fine detail that honestly won't be missed, especially again, like I mentioned before, if you're trying to make like five of these guys, that's a very small detail that'll take a lot of time that you can just omit and it doesn't detract from the miniature in any way. Once those details have set, I take it off the craft knife that we were using as a sculpting handle and cut away at the wires that are now attached to the skull. And then I add a little bit of green stuff onto the model and I can attach the skull to the miniature itself. Also being sure to do a little bit of sculpting on the back of the neck to make that go into the uh, rest of the spine a little bit more seamlessly. I also almost forgot to actually add the collarbone, so I quickly do that, and technically you should probably do this before you add the skull, it'd be a lot easier. But I add the collarbone, and then I go back, and I also add the shoulder blades as the kind of final details of the main body of the skeleton. I then go back and cut out the shield that we had made and actually add a little bit more green stuff onto the other side to make a couple of the details and then while that still hasn't set yet, attach that onto the arm. And then I go back to our base and I take off the spearhead as well, attaching that onto the spear itself. And then to finish off the miniature, we can add the feet and the hands. And this is actually a fairly difficult part. And I would suggest using um, a combination of your flat sculpting tool to get the basic shape of each of the bones for the hand, but also using either a craft knife or a needle, because to really sell the look, you do need to kind of make the uh, same concave shape that we've added for some of the other bones, but obviously on a much smaller scale. I also add a little bit of cloth onto this spear to kind of mask where the arm kind of fused in with the spear shaft. Adding these wraps on different parts of the miniature can be a really great way to cover your mistakes or to add definition and separation between two details that might be uh, mistaken for one another. With the spear and hands done, I now quickly go and add the feet of the miniature, following a fairly similar process, but the feet themselves are a lot easier to do since it's since they're generally in less complicated shapes than hands are. And with that detail added, our miniature is finished. And here you can see a little turnaround of the finished miniature with, once I've added a base. And here is the miniature with a layer of primer. And then I go ahead and give this guy a quick paint job. For this skeleton, it's not particularly complicated. I go over him with a base layer of a off-white, generally having to do two coats of thin down paint to get full coverage, since white is obviously a difficult color to get coverage on. And then go over the shield and the shaft of the spear with a brown. I also add a slightly brighter white onto the wrapping that we had put over the shield and then a little bit of metallic paint going over the spearhead. Again, I'm keeping this fairly simple because the whole idea for these guys is you're probably gonna want a handful of them and so you're not gonna wanna take a ton of time to paint each individual mini. With that in mind, I do some quick dry brushing over all of the wood and then go over that with some Agrax Earth Shade a dark brown wash for those of you who aren't familiar with it and I go over almost all of the miniature with his Agrax Earthshade to get um, the dark shadows into all of the details and create a good bit of contrast. It also helps with the skeleton itself because it kind of makes that kind of dirty grungy feel since it is like an undead creature. It's not like a pristine skeleton. However as you can see me doing here I actually add a black wash onto the metal parts. And then I go over the skeleton himself and add a quick dry brush to bring out some of those highlights and make it not quite so dark. And to finish the mini off, I do a little bit of dry brushing to bring back those highlights after the wash. I hope you guys found this video helpful. I noticed that a lot of you were requesting this uh, project, um, which makes a lot of sense. Skeletons can seem very daunting to make, especially at this scale. Since skeletons are so skinny and there's all these tiny little bits to them, it can be difficult to kind of figure out how to approach this kind of a project. So I hope this gave you guys some helpful insight. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, um, leave a comment if you have any questions, uh, hit the bell, subscribe, all the 
good YouTube stuff. Uh, it really helps uh, for a growing channel. But with all that out of the way, thank you guys so much for watching this video again, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.